Welcome to today's webinar, and thank you for joining us. My name is Paul Rubin. I'm part of the financial planning team here at Bell Investment Advisors. I have with me here my colleague, Rohan Nayak, a certified financial planner, investment advisor, and expert on social security at our firm. Today's webinar topic is how recent social security changes may affect you. Thanks, Paul. I just want to note that we decided to hold this webinar as a result of the new ruling as part of the Budget Act of 2015 uh, passed in last November. And now there are some important actions to take for, for our clients and prospects who have who fall within the eligible range for maximizing their Social Security benefits. So if we don't take action by the upcoming deadline in April, it could potentially cost you a lot of money. Before we start, let's cover a few housekeeping items. If you're having technical difficulties, please call our office at 1-800-700-0089, or you may submit a request for assistance via the questions box on your GoToMeeting control panel. If you have questions during the presentation, please submit them via the questions box. If you're not able to answer all questions, we will provide you an answer via email after the presentation is over. A lot of clients have questions regarding the complicated strategies within Social Security. I wanna make sure we ask those questions to you, Rohan, as we go through this presentation. Starting with the biggest and most common question our clients have, how do I get the most out of my Social Security benefits? So it's a good question and a very important question. Uh, there are many different ways to answer this question. We wanna keep this presentation short and to the point because Social Security calculations, as you know, are complex, and so we won't go too deep into the numbers. So I'll focus on the concept and the items today that warn you to take the actions in the coming month. So to answer, the answer to this question is based on your marital status. The, the strategy and the analysis is very different depending on if you're single, if you're married, divorced, or even a widow or survivor. The, the new ruling we're discussing today revolves mainly around married couples. The, the optimal strategy depends on your ages relative to each other and also the benefit amounts. So it's just about how you coordinate these benefits between a couple that can get you the maximum draw from Social Security. The, the optimal strategy is a combination of two different actions coming together for a couple. The first one in, the re in red there you can see file and suspend and the second one is restricted application in blue. What this means is one spouse files and suspends meaning defers their own benefit while the other restricts application in order to collect spousal benefit based on the other spouse's account. Can you explain what file and suspend means Ron? Yes, I know these two terms are not very simple to understand, so I'm going to go through these one by one and then show you how this works out. If you file and suspend, this triggers benefits for your spouse while allowing you to delay collecting your own benefit until later. At that later point, your monthly benefit will be higher. So file and suspend makes your spouse eligible to collect spousal benefits off your record. So one spouse files and suspends and the other spouse files a restricted application. What does a restricted application entail? So now let's say your spouse files and suspend. We just talked about this. And now for you, if you restrict your application, it lets you collect your spousal benefit which is half of your spouse's full retirement age amount. So you can collect the spousal benefit while deferring your own benefit up to age 70 when your, your own monthly benefit will be higher. Meaning the spousal benefit is this added benefit that you can collect on your spouse's record without touching your own benefit and letting it grow. Thanks, Rohan. I, I think it's easier to understand these two concepts when we talk about an actual couple. Can you provide us an example of where these two strategies can be used? 
Yeah, yes, here's one of many scenarios a client comes across, we've seen. Uh, this is a simplified version, but it shows how the strategy works. Now, let's, let's put this into perspective. We have a couple, Jack and Pam. Jack is 866, has a primary insurance amount uh, of 2600. In other words, his benefit amount at retirement age uh, is 2600 for Pam at 865. Her benefit amount is 1800. Now, the, the most optimal strategy for them is Pam files a restricted application for her spousal benefit at 866. She'll receive 50% of Jack's benefit, which is 1300, from ages 66 to 870. Now, while she's collecting the spousal benefit, her own benefit, which is untouched, is growing. But at 70, she will switch to her own maximum benefit, which will include four years of delayed credits amounting to 8% annually. From then on, her permanent benefit at age 70 will be 2376. Now, Pam can only do this if Jack has done the file and suspend for his own benefit. It is really important that you know that this is the only possible, this is only possible if Jack has done the file and suspend. So we, as we alluded to earlier, Congress has taken action to end some of these optimal strategies with the Budget Act in November. So what exactly are those changes? It's a good question. And this is the reason we're holding this webinar. Uh, the, the changes here, so, just a little bit of background over the last four or five years clients like you have figured out how to use this to their advantage and collect this added spousal benefit with the help of their financial planners so congress ruled to eliminate these claiming strategies but have grandfathered in two age groups under existing rules with two different effective dates so for file and suspend, no spousal or dependent benefits will be paid on suspensions done after April 29, 2016. In other words, after April 29th, file and suspend will no longer be a valid strategy. And the change for restricted application cannot be used by anyone who is younger than 62 at the end of 2015. In other words, still valid for those who are 62 or older at the end of 2015. I would, I would add one comment here on the slide. If you're younger than uh, these ages, you're not grandfathered in, and so you lose the strategy. We did have a question come in uh, regarding the last example we went over. Pam files at 865 or 66. In that example, she would file at 866. You have to hit your full retirement age in order to activate either the, the file and suspend or a teacher application. Thank you, Rohan. So going back to uh, the changes with the with the Congress passed. Can we show how this change affects things uh, to the example with Jack and Pam? Yes. Now here is Jack and Pam again, except now the new ruling comes in. Uh, exact same uh, benefits, ages, uh, for same example. Now, what's changed here is Jack has to file and suspend his benefit by April 29 of this year to make Pam eligible to collect or file a restricted application for her spousal benefit when she reaches age 66. At that point, she will receive half of Jack's benefit, which is 1300 from age 66 to 70. And then at age 70, she will switch to her own maximum benefit. Now again, Pam can only do this if Jack has done the file and suspend for his own benefit before the April 29 deadline. It seems like this new ruling forces Jack to take action to file and suspend now. What if he doesn't do it in time? That is a very important question, and that's why we're here to talk about. 
if Jack doesn't file in time, Pam will lose lose out on the spousal benefits she would be eligible for. So just want to go over what who loses from this new ruling in November last year. So if you turn 66 after April 30th of 2016, your spouse will be ineligible to collect spousal benefit on your record while you suspend. The other part to it is if you as the spouse turn 62 after January 1 of this year, you lose the right to collect the spousal benefits while delaying your own benefit to allow it to grow. Now, these changes affect married couples and qualified divorced spouses. There are certain situations this can affect people who are single, but that gets a little complicated, so I won't go into it during this webinar, but just know that there are other possibilities. Let's try to put this in the context for our listeners. A lot of people know there is some action that they have to take because of this change, but are not sure. How can you put this in simple terms so our listeners know whether they should act or not? Can you answer for someone that is listening and asking, does this apply to us? Yes, and this is, this is tough to put in simple terms, uh, but you can use these two very important questions as a starting point. The first question to answer for a couple is, did we both reach age 62 before the end of 2015? Now, if the answer is no, then it's simple. You're not grandfathered in. If the answer is yes, then you go to the next question, which is, if one of us at full is one of us at full retirement age. If the answer again is no, then you won't be grandfathered in. If it's yes, then you have to file and suspend by April 29. This is an easier way to see if you're eligible to take action. So just to be clear for everyone listening, can you highlight what the next step should be? Yes. Now. This slide is similar to the previous one, but I can't highlight this enough as a takeaway from today's webinar. Uh, this is just another way of looking at your situation and deciding if you need to take action or not. So if you're 66 or older, you can still file and suspend your benefits before April 29th. If you are 62 or older, or you were 62 or older before December 31st of 2015, you will still be able to claim spousal benefits on your spouse when you reach the full retirement age. Now, these are definitely more, there are definitely more complex strategies that we cannot possibly discuss here in this webinar based on your age, your earnings, and how to best coordinate your benefits uh, within a couple or as partners. I strongly recommend you ask your advisor or your financial planner about taking your social security benefits and how to best coordinate the, both of those uh, with your sources of income and assets in retirement. Now, there are other complicated strategies that have not been mentioned here. This is purely uh, limited to the deadline that's coming up. So I have not mentioned those here but I would recommend you bring that up and bring your specific situation with your advisor. Thanks, Rohan. That's the end of the presentation. We've left a few minutes for questions, so if you wish to submit a question, please type it into the questions box on your GoToMeeting control panel. We'll answer as many questions as we can, but if we don't answer your questions specifically, We'll get back to you with an answer after the presentation. So we just got a question that came in. Uh, the question states, what about when one spouse is already receiving maximum benefit while the other spouse has not reached age 66? That's that's a good question. And it's been a common question that, that the clients have been asking us because it's, it's common to have one spouse within a couple who has already applied for it. And uh, the answer to that is, if the, the spouse has not reached age 66 yet, they're still eligible to collect a spousal benefit when they, when they get there. And that's because you've already filed for your benefits. The other spouse has filed for their own benefits. 
So if that's clear enough of an answer for you, uh, I hope that makes sense. If not, please talk to us offline and I can provide more details. Thanks, Ron. We have another question that came in. It states, does this strategy apply to divorced couples? Good question. And this one, it really depends on how long you were married uh, and if you remarried once you were divorced or uh, it's, it's similar to a married couple if the ages kind of fall in line. So it's really hard to answer that question without knowing the details behind your age and your ex-spouse's age. Uh, and if there was a remarriage involved at some point. Um, so again, talk to your planner or talk to us offline after the webinar and I'm happy to uh, go into more details. Uh, we have one more question. Rohana states, if I am not eligible for this strategy, what strategies are available to me? So if you're not within those age ranges that we mentioned in the webinar, uh, there's certainly other strategies that might not require immediate action this, this next month or this year, but it's really important to look at uh, how to get the most out of your benefits. So it comes down to specific situation given your age, even if you're single or married, um, your age, your benefit amount, and whether it makes sense in your overall retirement plan to delay or to take it now, uh, also depending on your, your health and other factors. So again, uh, I know I kind of sound repetitive here, but it's really hard to answer some of the questions without knowing the details. So again, strongly recommend you to talk to your planner. Thanks, Rohan. So we did have some other questions come in, but we apologize and won't be able to get to all of them today. However, we will follow up with you uh, specifically. And if you happen to have a question after the webinar, please do not hesitate to contact us again. So that concludes this presentation portion of today's webinar. A recorded version of today's webinar will be available on our website within a week. Additionally, all of our past webinars are available on our website although only clients can access our quarterly investment committee updates. Our next webinar will be held on May 25th at 2 p.m. Pacific time. This will be the investment committee update webinar, which we hope you can attend. You don't need to wait for our monthly webinar or letter to stay in touch. We update our website with new content regularly and we post daily market updates on Twitter. Bonnie Bell has a blog focusing on career life coaching issues you can find that at careerlifecoaching.bellinvest.com. And as always, if you have a question about your portfolio, please don't hesitate to contact us by email or phone. Thank you for attending today's webinar.